Welcome back to the Common Application. Let's complete our application to Willamette University. Before I log into my Common App account, I want to make a note that I have pulled together all of the materials I know I need to in order to complete this section of the application. So I'm just as prepared as I was when I started my Common App in the first time. Uh, and that includes knowing what Willamette's short answer response question is and typing that question up and having it ready to copy and paste into that section of the application when I'm ready. So now that we're prepared, let's log in. And the first page that we'll come to is our dashboard. This has a list of all of the colleges and universities that I'm planning to apply to using the Common Application. Uh, it also has some information about where I'm at in the process of applying. So you can see that most of my applications are still in progress, but for Reed, I have submitted my application. Um, and so let's scroll all the way down to Willamette and see where we're at. We're in progress. And if I show more details, it tells me what I have worked on and what I haven't. Um, and so my common application, that's the part that has the questions that are for all of the colleges and that information is going to go back to all of the colleges. That's complete. But I still have some questions specifically for Willamette that I need to work on. So I will go ahead and click there to take me to that section of the application and it will take me through all of the things I still need to do for Willamette's application. This looks pretty similar to the rest of the application that we've worked on. On the left hand side it shows all of the different colleges and when I get to Willamette it shows me uh, a menu of what I still need to work on. And so I will go ahead and get started by answering questions asked specifically by Willamette. Now you may notice as you're working on multiple supplements that some of the questions sound familiar uh, or similar to each other or sometimes they're even identical to each other and that is just sort of the name of the game with supplements. Um, the questions that are being asked in the section for a particular college those responses are going to go only to that college and so if multiple schools are interested in the same question, you're going to have to answer it more than once. So let's get started and the, as a reminder, the red asterisk or star means that these are required questions. If there is no red asterisk, asterisk or star, I have the option to leave that question unanswered. Sometimes there's a good reason to answer those questions and sometimes it makes more sense to leave them blank. But if it's red, gotta do it. So preferred start term, as you know, I'm planning to graduate at the end of uh, the school year in 2021 and start college in the fall immediately after that. Then they're asking about what type of application I'm submitting. Early action, early decision, or regular decision. It's important to know the difference between these and choose the one that makes the most sense for you. Early action and early decision are both good options potentially for students who know that Willamette is a top choice. There is a big difference between early action and early decision though. In both cases, the application deadline is going to be a little bit earlier than in regular, probably sometime in November, and I'll hear back from the college probably by winter break about whether or not I've been admitted. The difference is that under early action, I still have until the spring to make my final decision about where I will attend. Early decision is a binding application process, and that means that when I submit an application under early decision, I've made a decision that Willamette is my top choice, this is where I want to go to college, and if I'm admitted, I'm going to enroll. And so I am not allowed to apply to other colleges, under an early decision deadline and it once I'm admitted I need to revoke any applications that I've submitted to other colleges because I'm done I know where I'm going. Regular decision typically has a later deadline um, probably sometime in the winter and I will hear back from the college about my decision probably sometime in March or early April and then I'll have until later in the spring to make my decision about where to attend. Students who are applying for financial aid and need to compare financial aid offers and as they're making their decision um, likely are best 
suited to apply for early action or regular decision. Er, again, early has earlier deadlines, earlier notification, early decision is a binding option. Early action and regular decision are non-binding. I'm going to choose regular decision. You should choose what's best for you. And then we move on to a question about preferred pronouns. This is one that is not required, but Willamette is asking what pronouns do we want to be referred to by um, in our communications with the institution. And then they're asking about preferred names. So we've provided our legal name on the common application and now they're asking what do we prefer to be called. And I prefer to be called Libby and so I'm going to go ahead and choose that here. You can choose to share a preferred first, middle, and last name if you like. Uh, I do intend to pursue merit-based scholarships, so I'll go ahead and say yes. You can say no if you choose. Um, and I do plan on applying for need-based financial aid. In other words, I'll be submitting my FAFSA or my ORSA. I am not an international applicant, so I don't need to worry about this section, um, but the testing plan section I do need to consider. Um, and so this is about my SAT or ACT test, and there's a reminder that Willamette is test optional. And I have chosen to not submit my test scores. This is saying, if I had submitted my test scores, do I want Willamette to see them or to consider them uh, as they're making a decision? For me, I'm not submitting test scores, and so of course I don't want them to consider them. They don't have anything to see. However, if you are, if you have submitted test scores because they've been required for other colleges you're applying to, but you don't want Willamette to consider them, you would also choose do not consider my SAT or ACT scores. If you do want them to consider your scores as they're making decisions, you can select yes. And then th here are some options to read through about some special programs that Willamette offers. And they're asking under each of these paragraphs if these are programs that you're interested in participating in. And so you'll want to read through each of these and make your decision. And you can choose yes, 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 or no, depending on your answer, or you can leave it blank. And I'm going to go ahead and leave these blank, but you'll want to read through each of these and make the decision about your, uh, for your choice here, okay? What's the single most influential reason I applied to Willamette? That's my short answer. I have copy and paste and continue. My first choice for an academic interest, so what am I interested in studying? I can scroll down and find and here, I'm actually not quite sure. I'm pretty undecided about this. I have a lot of different interests, so I'm going to choose undecided, and that's okay. But I'm also allowed to choose a second or third choice, and so I'm going to do that here. I'm going to choose one of the things that I think I might be kind of interested in. And I could choose a third if I wanted and move on to the next section. Now they're interested in knowing about activities, and it is true that we have answered questions about activities in the earlier Common App section um, about what we did when we were in high school, but now they're interested in knowing what would we be interested in pursuing of activities that happen at Willamette. And we can choose up to five activities, and so I'm going to choose, I'm going to scroll through and look to see what's here, and I'm going to choose study abroad, the op option to live in another country for uh, a time while I'm in college. Sounds pretty good to me. I have some additional ones that I want to add, so click another activity and choose a second one. And I've been involved in the science club in high school, and so I think maybe I would be interested in that as well. Now I still have three more activities I can choose. I'm not going to do that, but you can choose as many as you would like. This next section is optional again and still about activities. If I have a resume that I want to submit, I can do that now. Um, 
I have provided a list of all of my activities and for me that has a list of all of the things that I would put on my resume so I'm not going to upload another one. If your activities list and your resume look fairly different from each other you may want to upload your resume and so from there you would on this section either click on my computer to upload that directly from your computer or uh, thumb drive or if you have it in a Google Doc you can upload from your Google Drive so you'll just click on the appropriate one and go through the process to upload there. If you have a website or other online presence that you would like to share with the admissions committee you can add the link here and click continue. The contact section is all about how much contact you've had with Willamette and what that's looked like and what kind of contact you're willing to have with them in the future. And so the first one is, have I applied previously? My answer is no, but let's take a look at what happens if we say yes. They're going to ask you when that application was. So if you have previously applied to Willamette, you'll want to share the date. That's so that they can connect your previous application with your current application so they have a full picture of who you are as an applicant. But again, for me, the answer is no. The next question is about how I heard about Willamette. And they want to know, they, they've given me up to 10 different ways that I can share that I've heard of Willamette. And they want to me to list them in the order of importance. And so for me, the first thing was I had a high school teacher who told me about the college and that was super important to me, but I also learned about Willamette by talking to a current Willamette student. Um, and I could add up to eight more ways that I have learned about Willamette. Am I willing to be contacted by cell phone, so text message or automated phone calls. These are probably going to be reminders about deadlines or things that might be missing from my application or other things that are important for me to know about this process. And so for me, I'm okay with hearing from them in that way. So I'm going to say yes, that's okay, and provide my phone number for them. You'll want to choose the correct response for you and click continue. Now they want to know about my family's relationship with Willamette. So we've shared some information already about Willamette um, and now they are looking for information specifically about my family's relationship. And the first thing they want to know is what my parent or guardian's email address is and that is because Willamette would like to be in touch with them and let them know about some things. So I'm going to provide my mom's email address. And then uh, they're asking, do I have any siblings who are applying for admission this year to the college? And my answer is no, but let's take a look at what happens if we say yes. We um, are asked for our relationship to that sibling, so brother, sister, stepbrother, stepsister, etc. They want to know their first and last name, and here they're looking for legal names again. And we can add up to five siblings who might be applying to Willamette at the same time as us. So for me, the answer is no. Same is true for relatives who've ever attended Willamette. My answer is no. But again, let's look and see what happens if we say yes. They want to know my relationship to that person. They want to know that person's first and last name. And that's it. So, and again, I can add up to five family members who have graduated from Willamette or attended Willamette, even if they haven't graduated. But for me, the answer is no. And then they're going to ask the same about whether or not I have any relatives who have worked for the university. And for me, the answer is no. If I were to click yes, they would again ask me for more information about who that person is and click continue. The criminal history section is one, like all parts of the application, that does need to be answered honestly. So if you have ever been convicted of a misdemeanor or a felony, you absolutely want to answer this question yes and provide an explanation, including what you learned from that experience. It is unlikely that you would be 
not admitted to Willamette for, because you answered yes to this question. However, if your truthful answer is yes and you respond no, then it is very likely that you will not be admitted. So honesty is the most important part of this question. For me, the answer is no, and so I'm going to go ahead and check no. But if the answer for you is yes, you'll want to say yes and provide that explanation. And then we can move on to the next part. The recommenders and FERPA section. FERPA stands for Federal Educational Rights and Privacy Act. Now this is a section of the Common Application Supplement where as you begin working on these in the supplements for each university, the information that you provide carries over into other supplements. That means that the first supplement I worked on, I already completed my FERPA release authorization. So if this is your first supplement that you're working on, you haven't done this yet, so I wanna show you what this looks like. Um, and so we can go ahead, go in and view the details. The first time you see this, you will have an option to see the release authorization and you'll find some instructions. It is very important that you read through all of these instructions, that you understand them, that you get help if you don't understand them so that you can, so that you do get to a point of understanding them because then you're going to check that you have read and understood the authorization. This section here, number two, is giving you some really good advice about how to make a decision you're going to be asked to make on the next screen. And that decision is about whether or not you want to have the right to see your letters of recommendation after they've been written, or if you want to allow those to be something that you don't see. And there's some good information, some advice to help you make the best decision for you about that. So once you have read these and understand them, you'll want to check that checkbox and click continue. And then you'll have um, a couple more things to do. One is to acknowledge that when you sign this authorization, you are saying that every high school or college that you've already attended has permission to send your records, your academic records, like your transcripts and your recommendation letters to any of the colleges that you're applying to. So that's really what this FERPA release is about. Do you give permission to share information between the high school and the college? And can colleges that you're applying to ask for information from your high school? So it's permission for those institutions to share information about you for the purposes of your application. So you'll say, yes, that's okay. And then you'll make that choice about your recommendation letters, whether you want to be able to, to see them or not. And then you're going to say that you also understand that when you make that decision, you're making it for all colleges and universities. And the minute that you submit an application or somebody writes a letter of recommendation on your behalf, you can't change your mind about it. So that's already happened for me. I've submitted an application and I'm not able to change my mind at this point. Um, but once you have done that, you'll sign your name, you will date it and click OK. And then it will be done for all of your colleges and universities and it will look like it did for me when I came in here. Information about your recommenders also carries through from one supplement to another. So again, because I've already worked on a supplement, I am seeing that my counselor information is already is already here. And so um, I don't need to re-invite my counselor to submit forms on my behalf, things like my transcript or school report form. Um, and the same is true, I have already entered some information about my teachers if I want a teacher recommendation. Now, this tells me that Willamette does not require any teacher recommendations, but I have the option to submit up to three. Okay, now when I have already submitted information about teachers, I will have the option to either choose somebody who I've already submitted and assign them to write a recommendation so I can choose this teacher who I've already submitted and assign them to write a letter and they get a notice saying, hey, Olivia wants you to write a letter of recommendation and to include that for Willamette. 
or I could choose to invite another teacher. And when I do that, I have the, a pop-up that asks me for their email address, what subject they teach me, what their title is, so Dr. Ms., Mr. Ms., their first name, their last name, and confirmation that I want them to complete an evaluation for Willamette. And then I would click invite, and they would get an email notice saying that they've been asked to write that letter of recommendation. Okay? An advisor is somebody who doesn't actually submit anything on my behalf, but I'd like them to be able to see my application. And so I give them permission to have access to that. And it, that form looks very similar if I want to invite that advisor. They're looking for an email address, first and last name. Click invite and they'll get an email that gives them permission to be able to see your application. Once you have completed this section, you'll go ahead and click continue and we're ready to submit. There's three things we need to do before we submit the application. The first one is to review it to, for accuracy and completeness. The second thing we need to do is if we are required to pay the application fee and then finally submit the application. So let's go ahead and do that. So in the review, we have uh, a PDF of the application showing up here, and it's kind of small. I can see it and I can read through it, but if I would prefer to see it in a larger PDF that I can really view better, I can click on Review PDF and that will pull up a new, uh, a new PDF version. Uh, it is important to read through all of this to make sure things are accurate and correct. If I find any mistakes, I want to click out and go back to that section of the application and fix it and come back here and review it one more time. Once I have done that and I've reviewed everything and know that it looks accurate and complete, I can click that I have reviewed the PDF copy and I'm ready to proceed and click continue. There's no application fee for Willamette, and so this section is not necessary, and I can go ahead and click Continue. And now I come to the signature page. Now, it is important that I read through everything before I check the boxes. So I'm going to read, make sure that I understand and agree, and click the box. So read, make sure I understand and agree, and click the box, and continue to do that all the way down, always making sure that I read and understand and agree before I do so. Then I'm going to sign my name, date the application, and click Submit. And when I do, I have applied to Willamette. And so have you. Congratulations. Congratulations.